This virus writes its own rules. He's written the counter rules. The changes that you are making, Australia, are working. And Australians appear to be living by them. Had we not taken the measures we'd already taken just 12 days ago, there'd be 5,000 more people with the virus right now. Data is the only fair dinkum way of telling what works, and the Prime Minister's sneak peek is a clue to high levels of compliance. Mapping time against action and then infection cases, Sydney University researchers reckon nine out of ten Australians must be good social distances, bending the case curve downwards. Eight out of ten would look pretty good too. But if only one more in ten went wayward, trouble. The infections would be headed skyward. We have to make sure that uh, we don't relax too soon, otherwise all of this effort might be wasted. We are quietly pleased, but we cannot stop. Sparseness remains the law of the land. So does day after day of home time. I feel like whatever Australia is doing to try to um, keep the number of deaths down, I am fully supportive of. Testing most of the bulk of 25 million Australians. Although clerics will be allowed to treat their Easter services as work, anyone thinking of going bush for a job... I just wait. ...will now have to put themselves into isolation beforehand. The cost to Main Street's obvious enough and a compulsory code is on the way for shop, office and warehouse rentals. The less a business gets through the till, the less rent they should pay. My comment to the landlords is do the right thing. The rate of new controls and big spending is slowing and next week Scott Morrison's promising to bring the public in on the projections and models that he and other leaders have been guided by. But whatever it says, the current regime stays just as is. Patience must become the virtue of Australians. To retreat, we're told, is to surrender. Greg Jennett, ABC News, Canberra.